we're fine. We're gonna be fine. Um, I am gonna call Tabby. I'm gonna call Tabby. This is an explore option, so I think we should be able to at least do two. I am gonna call Tabby, and then we're gonna go to see if we could do the doctor. We're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna, I don't know. Calling Tabby. We've done it every other time before. So I feel like, I don't know. We're gonna call Tabby. You dial your cousin's number. What mess have you gotten yourself into now? <laughs> uh. Clinic, emergency, scary. Uh. I don't think Tabby's gonna buy that one. Um. Honestly, I'm going for the clinic emergency. Scary. <laughs> Here we go again. Stay put. Don't move a muscle. Don't get sucked into any ghost dimensions or stuck, stuck in a mind collapse. Do you hear me? I'll be right there. It's like Tabby, as as much as Tabby was mad at us, Tabby is Tabby is, does kind of come in clutch. <laughs> Your cousin hangs up the phone. We're going to try to warn the doctor. You make your way to the door that beckoned to you yesterday. All intrigue now washed away. You know where it leads and you know what secrets the stone that lurked in the forgotten basement of the clinic had to share with you. Now the clinic holds a new horror. Yep. Somewhere beyond the narrow hallway leading from the house Hopper into the doctor's office, there is a monster preparing to do something unthinkable. Open the door. You grasp the handle and turn. Okay. Doc! Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Doc! <laughs> You do as she says, ducking out of the way. She shoots. The gun isn't very loud. There's only a pop as the projectile leaves the barrel whizzing through the air. I was gonna say, I bet you it's a tranquilizer. I was gonna say, Reese was saying that he remembered some things of that. Um, that, hold on. I was remembering to put my gloves back on and that's the wrong glove. Um. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> uh, I know, even at the lowest bomb with Tabby, she's still willing to come save our butts. I appreciate her as much as Tabby. Tabby, Tabby's complicated. <laughs> Tabby's a grumpy hero, exactly. She, she may not be happy with us, but she's not just going to leave us to die. <laughs> Need to do a tabby run? Yes. Okay. You turn to see a dart embedded in Reese's chest. He pulls the tranquilizer dart out from between his ribs, heaving heavy breaths as the drug courses through his system. You're going to have to try harder than you, than that you. <laughs> no, how did you? <gasps> There's Wayne! As if you could hope to stop me, you pathetic waste of flesh. Before Wayne takes another step down the stairs, paint flows out the cracks in the wood. Reese's panic, pulling in a mob of furious smears to hold his enemies in place. I, like, as creepy as Wayne is, Wayne is also best friend and comes and saves us too. 
Wayne is still creepy as fuck, but Wayne d has come and saved our butt. Like, he's the reason we made it out of the basement in at the end of episode three. So, like, Wayne still be creepy, and it's weird that he's just following us, but, like, Wayne is also helping. <laughs> okay, um, I read that one. Okay. The artist starts away, but the smears continue their work in his absence. Dr. Kelly makes her escape down the hallway, and Wayne is over come glued in place at the top of the stairs by uh, sniffling globs of paint. I was expecting that to be a run for Dr. Kelly or run for Wayne option. <laughs> so we get on our good list. Run after Dr. Kelly. You run forward, braving the onslaught of the smears, dodging them as best as you can to try to see where Dr. Kelly went. The door in front of you is smothered in paint. Hey. Dr. Kelly's voice crackles out of some unseen speaker. You, tap girl. I'm stuck in the safe room. I can't help you from here, but you can help the both of us. Sure, Wayne can handle this. Uh, you were poisoning him. Uh. You survived. What is? I don't know. Uh. You survived. What's going on? I think you can probably put that together. I need you to get the me to the medical storage room. I'll give you further instructions when you're there. Okay. You turn back around and head to the medical storage room. I'm here. Great. Now listen to me. I need you to use the black taped... I need you to use the black taped key to get into the cabinet and bring the elephant tranquilizers. It's a bottle labeled Carfentanil. Bear tranquilizers clearly aren't going to cut it anymore. Hey, Reese. An intercon system intercom system huh doc good you should hear this tap roll you don't have to do anything she says i'm not gonna hurt anybody else just her if i don't you and i both know she's going to shoot me full of elephant tranquilizers did you hear that did i hear that right and shove me back down in that basement or maybe someplace or maybe someplace even worse and keep killing me every day for the rest of my miserable existence. How? What? How the hell did Reese become th this? <laughs> I feel amazing right now. Better than I felt in my... I've ever felt in my life. I'm not dangerous. She's just scared because she knows she has to finally pay for what she's taken from me.
Jessica, I understand why there's possibly, a, if you don't make a certain choice in this episode, you lose out in your romance option. <laughs> I kind of want to say that he has a point. Like I, I can, I understand why the doctor was doing that if that's what's keeping him in human shape. But also, like Reese still has a point, though. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't want Reese to murder her, though. Not gonna let you kill someone, Reese. Why not? She wasn't afraid I might die. Does she know those tranquilizers aren't going to kill me? Does she care? Trust me, Reese. I've always been careful with your medication. I want you to live. I love you. Tell yourself whatever lies you have to, Mom. Mom's in quotes. If you wanted a good relationship, you had your chance and you decided to convince me I was dying instead of just letting me exist. <clears throat> Wayne's there now. Don't try to spin it like some kind of crime of passion now that the consequences are, are staring you in the face. Enough. Reese cries out in pain. Ah, what the hell did you do to my shoulder? Keen eye. You see for the brief in briefest instant something coming out of Wayne's sleeve. Just a flash of pale yellow. Then it's gone, slithering back into Wayne's clothes. I'll handle it. Try to get somewhere safe until then. The two stagger off down the hallway. Quick, grab the tranquilizers and head to the safe room. Oh, we don't have to grab them. It's not forcing us to take them. Grab the tranquilizers. Do as she says. The tranquilizers are easy to find, marked with small a small square of black tape to match the key. She's clearly an organized woman. Head for the safe room. You make your way out of the medical storage room and back to the hallway where Dr. Kelly disappeared. As you approach, Dr. Kelly heaves open the door, slowly breaking apart the mass of paint sealing it shut. Hurry, I don't think I can keep it open for long. You slip past her into the safe room. She shuts the door quickly, though one of the little smears manages to slip past her. She stomps on it. Paint viscera splatters across the cement floor. And I'm worried that I wasn't going to take him. <sighs> okay. It sounds like Reese and your friend are still fighting. We probably have a few minutes before he gets here. Look how cool she is. Yeah. I, I can get it. I can get it now, now that we're un unveiling some more of backstory here while we're at it any other secrets you're keeping <laughs> maybe we both survive I might decide to share a few more if you don't go tattling to anybody um what's the game plan both short and long term well 
I pump him full of elephant tranquilizers, then lock him up in here. Then I somehow convince him to see things from my perspective. Then we all live happily ever after. Okay. Get more with her. I was going to say, she, I think, is, I was guessing she's one that you have to be older. Um, just kill him. Oh my gosh. I see no flaws with this plan. Uh, so you're just going to lock him away again? Yeah, it's either that or he dies. God knows I don't want that to be the case, but you got to work with what you've been given and what I've been given it's an ethical dilemma with no good outcomes. Just have to decide which is the lesser evil. Hmm. She's the only one? Okay. What is this room? Old x-ray room, lead walls. Okay, after I realized this whole situation was a possibility, I had the door reinforced with special remote controlled locks. Glad it could finally come in handy. Let's talk Reese. Yeah, I bet you have some questions. Yeah, go ahead. I have nothing left to hide. Uh... Uh, what is he? At first, I thought he was some kind of werewolf. But if he is, he doesn't follow any kind of full moon rules or anything. Silver doesn't do shit to him, and you've seen what he looks like. It's just weird. I almost wish I could examine him... Well, he's fully transformed. I'd be fascinated to know what happens to him or how his body does it. But he seems pretty hell-bent on ripping my throat out, so I guess that'll just have to remain a mystery. When did you find out? A little after he hit puberty. He had all the usual changes, then a few extra. Thickened nails, sharp teeth, elfish ears. I figured he might have some kind of genetic disorder had him checked out at a few specialists but there was nothing obviously wrong with him then we had an argument and he changed right in front of me it was nothing like what he is now just a couple of inches and some facial abnormalities enough to be noticeable i was scared he could see that and he stopped I thought it was a one-off or maybe a hallucination, but the second time it wasn't as subtle and it didn't go away as easy. That's when I knew for sure that this was something beyond my realm of expertise. Okay. She planned everything apparently. It's like he decides to kill people. Yeah, well apparently specifically her. Um. How did he not know he how did he not know what he was? I've been medicating him since he was 12. We've only had three instances like this before, maybe four, depending on what counts. This is the worst by far. He doesn't seem to understand at first that he looks different and just and I just make sure to stay on top of his dosages. So he rarely ever does. But I've been preparing for this inevitability. He's an adult now. There's only so much I can do to control him. <sighs> Was his dad similar? <laughs> A strange little smile creeps onto Dr. Kelly's face. I wish I knew. Reese just kind of happened. I wasn't seeing anyone. I just woke up pregnant one day. I know how impossible that sounds. I'm a doctor for Christ's sake. I just kept having these weird dreams, almost like sleep paralysis episodes. Romantic sleep paralysis episodes. They were 
actually kind of sweet. They were just dreams. But then all of a sudden, my period stopped. I got morning sickness and roughly nine months later, Reese. Reese, yes, apparently Reese is Jesus. <laughs> um, so this is like with his tail. Wasn't there like the we read like the Taily Poo story thing in like the books at the library. Because that was one of there was there was there was multiple different story things we read at the library. It's not it's not the tail. There was one there was another one, though, wasn't there? I guess that was there was Tommy Knockers, the Taily Poo and. If you have book smart, oh, OK. If you have book smart, there's more of that. That makes 100 percent sense. OK. How do you know he's dangerous? Well, he wants to murder me, so that's clue number one. It's not like he's usually a violent kid. He's mostly just sad. But every now and then we butt heads and that's usually when this side of him comes out. Imagine if this happens anytime he gets frustrated with anyone. Imagine he gets road rage one day, turns into a 12 foot tall monster with a million teeth and rips somebody apart in the middle of a major metro metropolitan area. Yeah, he's dangerous. Ah. Uh, I can fix him. Uh. Wampus cat. That was the other one. Okay. I was going to say there was a third one we read. It doesn't mean he's dangerous. I mean, you are the biggest threat to him. Don't preach to me. Sure, right now I'm the focus of his ire, but who's to say he's not just going to find a new target once I'm out of the picture? I know what he's capable of, capable of so it's my job to make sure he doesn't hurt anybody. The relationship between you seems so difficult. Yeah, you could say that. He was such a cute kid. When I found out I was pregnant, I was terrified. I didn't know if I'd be ready, but he made me love being a mom. It's not like I was going, it's not like it was going to be sunshine and roses forever. No matter what, kids grow up and they change, sometimes for the worst. This is part of being a mom too, doing what you can to make sure the child you brought into the world isn't going to go around eating people. <laughs> Why did you start poisoning him? Dr. Kelly sighs. Can we stop calling it poison? Yes, it's poison, but the act of me giving him poison was not me poisoning him. I was medicating his illness. It started when he was around 15. I've been giving him increasingly high doses of low, low open? But his body kept adapting and his symptoms would come back, especially if we ever fought. Okay. I couldn't keep ordering all those drugs. It was already suspicious and I could risk losing my license. Especially if anyone else ever found out what I was using them for. Someone approached, approached me with a solution. I took it. And I've been dealing with the emotional and mental consequences of that decision ever since. Okay. It's a medication used to prevent and treat seizures, panic disorders, anxiety, and the movement. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, that would fit what she would probably be needing for that then. Okay. Who approached you and what did they say? Dr. Kelly gives you a long, hard look. I don't want to talk about that woman. But screw it. I might die tonight. Sure, I'll tell you.
what just happened. That's all I have to say about that. Yes, that's supposed to happen. That was odd. Consequences of what? <laughs> that's the thing that's so wild about this. It's like, I don't even know what I did that like made that happen. Like, you know how, like, some stories, like, you can tell, like, okay, because I made this choice, I got this consequence. I don't even know what choice I would have made that made that would have made that happen. <laughs> I don't even know. What did I do? <laughs> I guess leave it at that. Sit in silence and wait for Reese. Now I want to know, what choice did I make that led that to that? Was it something I said to her in episode three? I don't... Okay. You and Dr. Kelly sit in silence and wait for her son to make his way to you. Okay. The distant sound... The distant... The, 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 the sound of a distant breaking glass cuts through the silence of the clinic outside the safe room. Shit. This might be game time. Dr. Kelly opens the door. The two of you stare out into the hallway. Oh. Ah. It's fine. Is this what you were so afraid of? Hand over the tranquilizers. This is our shot. The fact that you still even have the choice. You have the choice to bring them with you. And you still even have the choice to give them to her. Yeah, I was going to say the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. Give her. Yeah. Ah. <gasps> Tabby. I guess that's the consequence of calling Tabby. That's the consequence of calling Tabby before going after the doctor. Pretty much. Yep. Okay. It was Tabby with the shotgun in the hallway. Exactly. I was going to say the other thing our keen eye specifically pointed out earlier is that Tabby had a gun in her office it like very much pointed that out in that situation partially related to the other thing but it also was like she has this i was wondering based on like the devs tweets and stuff of like okay it very much hinted and felt like we're gonna lose someone else this episode well At least we got to hang out with Reese a bit more. <laughs> Before Dr. Kelly can fire, a different shot rings out. Reese's body is thrown to the wall. Shotgun in hand, your cousin rounds the corner and trains her weapon on his withering body. Tabitha, what are you doing here? Stop it. Let me sedate him. We can deal with this non-lethally. Are you insane? That thing was trying to kill you. Because obviously Tabby doesn't know it's Reese. Like, obviously she doesn't know that. Help Dr. Kelly. You leap forward... Facing your body between Tabitha and the whimpering Reese, his face already trying to stitch itself back together as he withers on the ground. Papra, what the hell do you think you're doing? 
was gonna say, can we tell her it's Reese, please? Don't kill him, he's still a person. Person my ass, did you see his face? Both of you, shut up and help me drag him into the safe room, now. You turn to see Dr. Kelly already pulling her son towards the open doorway. Tabitha swings the gun onto her back, huffily, huffily jumping in to help Dr. Kelly. It's not long before his regenerating body is sealed away behind the door. Achievement unlocked, keeping the status quo. Okay, well, I guess we, Reese is maybe supposedly alive still? <laughs> I know, that's the thing, is like, we did the right thing, keeping him trapped in a room for the rest of his life? Instead of ending his suffering? My thought on that is that's not our choice to make. Like, to end it? Like, it's, that's not our choice to make. To end it. Like, yeah, we could just put him out of his misery of stuff, but that's not our choice. Like, I don't feel like we, we should be making the, the choice of things. Ooh, yes, which... Which trait, which trait gets you out of it like Kenai does in the mine? She has the shotgun, yeah. I mean, the thing was that we were telling Tabby to do it, though. Hot? Really? If you're hot, you can talk Reese down. Okay. Tame the beast, baby. Yay, hormones. That's interesting, though. And that's the thing that's so cool about this is that the traits... You have those traits that also affect things like that. So it's not even just the choices you're making as you play you're making that huge decision of picking which two traits to take into the game. Take the piece platonically. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Not exactly how I thought that would play out, but at least none of us are dead. If you've done any permanent damage to him, you're going to be the one paying for the medical supplies, Miss Scarlet. You you aren't seriously going to keep that thing alive, are you? It's clearly dangerous. What makes you think you can keep it locked up? It is my son, Miss Scarlet, and despite appearances, he is still human. I prefer you to refer to him as such. And I've managed to keep him safely locked away and harmless for years. Sure, it'll be a little more difficult now that he knows about his condition, but that room is lined with lead. He's not going anywhere. He's human? Are you sure about that? Are we talking about the same guy? Trust me, I've done genetics tests. He is human somehow, and it's my job as his mother to protect him and protect people from him. It's not a burden I take lightly. You don't have to worry about him getting out anytime. You don't have to worry about him getting out anytime soon. Ah. Uh. Dr. Kelly bought us time. I'm sure we can figure out what to do about him later. There's no we. He's my son. He's my problem. I'd prefer it if both you forgot what you saw tonight and went about your own business. If I recall from two minutes ago, you would have been chomped in half if I hadn't stepped in. I don't think you're capable of dealing with this rationally, Joanne. 
Are you just going to hope somebody steps in next time too? One of these days, your luck is going to run out. Get out of my house. I don't need some kid to stand here lecturing me all night. I have a lot of cleaning up to do. You and your cousin leave the clinic. Dr. Kelly slamming the shotgun blasted door behind you. The two of you make your way to the bottom of the hill where Tabitha's car is parked among the sleepy houses of Scarlet Hollow's residential street. She places her gun in the trunk and turns to face you. Where's Stella? I want Stella and Gretchen. <laughs> That's the other question. Where's Wayne? <laughs> Did Wayne make it out of that? She was worried for their safety and for her son. Yeah. Spoilers? Okay. Okay. I'm curious. I'm curious. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, you're alone right now. Is Stella still missing? I tried calling her a couple of times, but I keep getting her stupid voicemail. Yeah. <gasps> the two of you are interrupted by the sound of panting and the telltale jingling of dog tags. Gretchen? No other? Oh, okay. They're scraps. Hi, scraps. <laughs> it's the militia. They've poured out of the woods to stand before you on the road. What in the? You were looking for Gretchen, weren't you? <gasps> we found her and her person. They're by the side of the road a little ways through the woods. They're both fine, but the human wouldn't leave when we tried to make her, and Gretchen insisted on sticking by her side, so we'll have to take you to them. Hopefully you can use your people words to get them to go someplace safe. The woods are crawling with those awful creatures. It's not safe anymore, not even for a human. Why do these dogs look so serious? We should get in the car before they eat us. <sighs> Paw Patrol! Yay! <laughs> just play. I know. I know. I have questions and I just need to keep reading to get all the answers, apparently. Okay. Um... They found Stella. Come on, we better follow them. How do you know that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I was going to say, we haven't been hiding this. Didn't you know I can talk to animals and animals can talk to me? Why are you cracking jokes right now? Ugh. I don't know about following a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of strange dogs into the woods, but if there's a chance, you're right. Okay, we'll take a quick detour. Game answers questions. What? Stella! Stella! Gretchen! Okay. You let the dogs lead you into the wilderness, following on their heels as they take you to Stella. Before long, the trees thin, and you find yourself on a steep hill by a two-lane road lined on one side by sheer rock. Why do I feel like this is where Stella's parents died? And there they are. Keep them safe. You see any a speaker? They leave. You know I. <laughs> there, sitting on a log, staring mournfully out at the asphalt is Stella. You watch her from the underbrush. Great, she's alive. Let's go. I'm going to go talk to her. You step forward, gravel crunching under your feet as you walk along the edge of the road. Tabitha hangs back, crouching in the bushes, trying to stay unseen. You sit on the log beside, Stella, beside, beside Stella. Oh, words. For those who can talk to animals. Yeah. Goodness. Okay. Capril, how did you find me? <laughs> it's 
Scraps and Daisy formed a militia. It's a long story, but they helped me find you. What would I do without you? You must have been really worried about me. I'm so sorry, Tap Girl. Uh, you should probably know what happened about with Reese. <laughs> okay. Uh, I really missed you today. Missed you too. I'm sorry I was gone. I just had to come here. This is where the accident happened. My parents died on this bend of the road. Yep, I was right. Okay. Keen eye. I'm playing this game with keen eye and maybe I have a keen eye. Is that, is that, is that what we're saying? <laughs> They were taking me to college. I was lying in the back seat. It had just rain and the sun was finally coming out. Hmm. Achievement unlocked at the edge of everything. Yeah, like we told, it's totally reasonable. Like we knew, we knew her parents had died in a car crash. So that's, we had, yeah, we had known that. Yeah, as soon as it started to pan up, I was like, oh no, they're going to be like missing their heads or something. Or something's going to be. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I know that's probably a bummer to talk about. It's awful. Really messed me up for a while. Uh, yeah, seeing your parents headless is totally reasonable to be completely messed up for probably ever. Yeah, because the car roof was sitting on the road behind them. There were hints. Yeah. Day one of us meeting her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the reason she's alive is because she wasn't sitting up. She was laying down. Because she wasn't sitting up. Yeah, when I saw that the, the roof was off, it was like, oh, it got cut off and she's alive because she was laying. I immediately connect. I'm like, she's alive because she was laying down. Because it did. she wasn't in the top headspace of the car. Enai again. Uh-huh. I think I'm still messed up. There's whole years of my life after the accident that feel like they just never happened. Like every time I try and remember them, it's blank. I have all these videos sitting on my channel that I don't even remember filming. It's scary. At least it hasn't been like that for a while. Thank God. I've never talked about this stuff before with anyone. Ah, uh, was it a great headspace? Yep. <laughs> Take her hand. Warm against the cool night air, and the skin of her knuckles is soft. She finally tears her gaze from the road, her sad eyes meeting yours. With a hint of a smile creeps up the corners of her mouth, her dimples beginning to crease. Her hand shifts, her callous palm fitting into yours, her grip tightening. It's strong and comforting. You can tell she feels held, and so do you. The two of you stare out at the road. Uh, is Gretchen an emotional support dog? Yes. <laughs> I mean, she takes Gretchen everywhere.
Yeah, because she's been stuck. Yeah. Gretchen is precious. Exactly. I think the accident is probably why I got into ghost hunting. I think I just wanted to see them again. Ow! <laughs> Oh, I, for I, I forgot about her mom being- yeah. I forgot her mom was the vet. We're fine! <laughs> I wanted to know whether I could. I never found anything, so I eventually gave up. And last night happened. And I ran out- uh, I ran out here to see if maybe it would happen with them too. Ow, Miku, ow, my heart. <laughs> yeah, Gretchen's her bestie, but also a connection. <laughs> ow, my heart. Oh, uh, this episode. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Even if it meant seeing the crash again or seeing them all messed up and dead, I just wanted to see them. It's been a whole day. I don't think they're coming. I know, and we still have more. This is four, and we have three more. Oh my gosh. Ugh. <laughs> but it's such a good story, though. Okay. Okay. Whatever hell Charlie got trapped in, yeah. We're, we're doing this one. Put an arm around her shoulder. Oh. You carefully place your arm around her shoulders and pull her close to you. You feel her chestnut hair against your cheek. She smells a little sweaty and a little sweet. The faded scent of her shampoo mingling with an, the natural perfume of her skin. It's nice. You take a deep breath, stroking her arm with your thumb, letting her lean into you. She rests her head against your shoulder, closing her eyes serenely. That hint of a smile spreads into a barely contained grin that finally chases away the worry in her features. <sighs> Tabby is hiding in a bush. <laughs> She's hiding in a bush nearby. She decided not to come over. So she literally is like crouched hiding in a bush. <laughs> I didn't tell Tabby to talk to her, and Tabby didn't decide to, so. I didn't invite Tabby in. I said I was going to go talk to Stella. Yeah. Yeah, Tabby's still here. Yeah. Ow. Okay. Um... We could always wait a little longer. Stella nestles into you, her well-muscled shoulder relaxing against your body. You each share each other's warmth as you both stare out <laughs> at a quiet mountain road. <laughs> Gretchen pants lazily in Stella's lap. Gretchen, you're too precious. Nothing happens. Nothing continues happen to happen for a few long minutes. I think I'm ready to throw in the towel. It's not like I would want to see them like that anyway. <laughs> I guess I came out here hoping I might get a chance to say goodbye or something like that. Ow! <laughs> this is why we have Squish, right? Okay. Bella, we love you, but also, ow. <laughs> She's brave, though, yeah. Goodness. Okay. We're breathing. We're breathing because I want to know what happens and also talk to Stella more. 
<laughs> we're breathing. Yeah, she said, I guess we didn't confirm. What, she did say something that she hadn't told anyone else before. That it was the first time talking about it. So, yeah. The answer is yes, no one else. Goodness. Okay. They're probably somewhere better than whatever hell Charlie got trapped in. I hope you're right. I thought a lot about what my might come after whether they're somewhere else or if they just stopped existing i guess we've seen at least some evidence of the afterlife i hope that means there's a good version too where they're still on the long car ride <laughs> yeah also like all this and like you know uh we still kind of have to tell her that reese is a monster <laughs> because we're if we're given the option to do that which i did see but we had other things that i wanted to click on so, all well, your shit for now, yeah. Yeah, it was like Reese can wait, but also like we all still have all we have all that thought also happened today. This whole conversation with her opening up, yeah. Do we have to? If anything, it will keep her safer, though, if she knows. You know, like, if she actually does go hang out, you know, don't make him angry kind of thing. I don't know. I'm hoping I didn't accidentally get too locked into romance stuff with Reese, though. Okay. Okay. Um, listening to dad's tapes with a place in the back seat. Me to eventually catch up to them. <laughs> and then it won't matter that I never got to say goodbye. <laughs> I keep getting to the point that I'm like, okay, I'm not going to cry anymore. And then I just keep crying. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <sighs> you can always say goodbye for... Um, say goodbye now. Okay. Stella sits in silence for a long moment, her, bre her, her breath slow and even. Goodbye. I love you. <sighs> Don't worry about me. I'm going to be fine. She's silent again as if waiting for a response. But it never comes. But she smiles, a lightly glimmer returning to her sad eyes. That kind of felt better. <laughs> I don't think I realized how much I've kind of trapped myself in my own head. Thank you for breaking me out of it. She straightens up, stretches her neck. Gretchen hops down from her lap, tags jingling in the quiet night air. I know that stretch. That's the time to go home stretch. Thank the Lord. I'll be sleeping in my own bed tonight. <laughs> Gretchen, we love you. <sighs> Deliberately be an asshole. Yeah, it would be interesting to do a kind of run like that. It would be interesting. I don't know if I could do it, but it'd be interesting to watch. Well, the plus side to this is my sinuses are now less congested. <laughs> It's fine. Okay. Thank you, Tap Girl, for talking some sense into this girl. Oh, Gretchen. Thank you, Tap Girl, for talking some sense into this girl. We should probably head back, right? I haven't slept in a day. <laughs> Yay, clear sinuses. Exactly. She doesn't need to hear about this tonight. You keep the events that transpired at the clinic to yourself, at least for now. I don't suppose I could ask you to walk me home? Flirt! 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 <laughs> I'd love nothing more. 
You offer her your arm. She smiles, slipping hers into the crook of your elbow. She pulls you closer until the skin of your forearm brushes against her side. I love that we're just leaving Tabby in the bush. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, normally I'm not like she, she I, I want her to know that information. I think she deserves to know that information, but not right now. Not right now. I know, Tabby's just chilling in the bush. <laughs> It's about time. Let's not waste another se second sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And this is me. Can we stay over at Stella's? You want to come in? Yes. Yes. <gasps> Tip. Dialogue options marked romance will start a romantic arc with the character you're talking to and it will lock you out of your romantic arcs with other characters. We're romancing Stella. This is a ditching Tabby run always. I, I mean, but really though, we ditch Tabby, we call her to save our ass, and then we ditch her again. That, that, that is literally what we've done this entire playthrough. It's about time. Okay, to be fair, Lonely, they did change it. That this is the point where you could actually start romancing people. They like took out the flirt options in the earlier episodes and stuff too. Like they they delay that this is purposeful of of the devs. So interlocking bits and pieces of decisions is a nightmare as is. Yeah, that's fair. That that's that's fair. <laughs> Yeah, except if you have the hot trait. Right, 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 right. If you have the hot trait, you can still flirt early. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't blame the devs on making it. Be like, no, you got to pick one because we can't keep track of anything else. Okay. I love that you still, you do still have the option to back out if you don't want to. But uh, yes, yes, yes. I was hoping you'd ask. I love to. Yes, romance, Stella. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Stella ushers you inside, a barely contained grin, um, threatening to split into an excited smile. Gretchen's a princess and she's adorable. Okay, okay. Let me just go take a quick shower. I've been sitting outside for a day. I need some soap. Uh, I'll just take a minute. Then we can get cozy. Oh, man. I would kill for a shower. I mean, we've been through a lot. Stella laughs. Yeah, I'm sure you've built up a l quite a lot of grime today. It's all yours when I'm done. She hurries off, leaving you and Gretchen in the living room. Finally, I've been reunited with my bed. Gretchen hops into the massive pillow that serves as her dog bed, curling up and sighing a heavy dog sigh of relief. Gretchen, precious bean. Hold on. Screenshot. <laughs> yeah, we definitely... Yeah, we probably got a bit of Reese on us, so... <laughs> and not in a good way, so... Uh, I can catch up on my beauty sleep. But before she has the chance to fall asleep, a heavy knock startles her... Er, startles her and you, Gretchen growls. Is Tabby following us? Reese's pieces. Boo! No! <laughs> You're not wrong, NLA. But also, no. <laughs> There's someone at the door. Wayne? It's that horrible man who smells like rotting meat. Stella, Stella! Also based on that and the music, Wayne?
is it? You know who it is. I did know who it was. I did know who it was. Open the door, please, Tap Girl. I don't know why I want to open the door. What? <laughs> I gotta open the door. Like, I at this point, he's just trying to help. But also, the ominous music is making me question my logic in that. <laughs> open the door. You summon your bravery to cross the room and open the door. Wayne cocks his head, the stained veil over his face, fluttering in the slight breeze outside. The outside of his clothes are streaked with what you first, um, at first might think, at first think might be gore, but you quickly realize it's actually paint. There are wide claw marks down his shirt, but he's still in one piece after his um, altercation with Reese. I was wondering how, if Wayne did get out of there. Dude, I'm in the middle of something. <laughs> I will say, actually, I was worried about you, Wayne. Did you make it out? Wayne, I was so worried about you. No need to worry. The boy managed to catch me off guard with those little constructs of his, but he wouldn't stand a chance against me without little tricks like that. I won't keep you long. I know you have a warm bed and a warm body to keep you occupied tonight. But I wanted to give you a suggestion for tomorrow. You should take advantage of Tabitha's absence at the estate. Forbidden places won't be forbidden without her around to stop you. Do a little exploring. You might be surprised at what you can find. He slowly steps back shining eyes fixed on you as he disappears into the dark night beyond Stella's door. <laughs> Gretchen growls, escalate into barks. Intruder! Monster! Fiend! Oh, Stella, come quickly! There's some disgusting smelling man trying to threaten us! Calm down, Gretchen. Were you just talking to somebody, Tap Girl? Scared off a raccoon. Uh. I'm gonna tell her is Wayne. At this point, I don't have a reason to not to. Wayne just stopped by to try and spook me. He's still following you. Are you sure we're safe? Uh. You don't have to worry about him. Not so sure about that. He did just stop by my house at a very late hour while I was preoccupied. It's not super reassuring. But I'm too tired to care too much at this point. I just want to collapse in bed with you. You'll keep us safe, right, Gretchen? I'll tear out the throat of anyone who dares break in, break in to hurt my precious Stella. If they bend down... Bend down to within biting height, that is. But I can always tear at their ankles until they have no choice. <laughs> Gretchen snarls, yapping fiercely. That's right, Gretchen. You're the most vicious little... Um... Gen... Dren... Gen... Trick? I don't know what that... What's that word? <laughs> Hug there is! <laughs> oh, yeah... <laughs> Uh-huh. Old, it means old. Okay. Now, let's go to bed before I pass out. Oh, right, but you wanted to take a shower. Sorry. Head's a little fuzzy from staying up for the past day. There's fresh towels in the bathroom, and I've got um, some extra bathrobes. I can put your clothes through the wash so they'll be extra clean and fresh in the morning. I was gonna say, like, we're gross. We, yeah. <laughs> it somehow feels like the longest and shortest shower I've ever taken. Too tired to think, too tired to process the flow of time. Stella sits outside the bathroom door and makes um, quiet, comfortable small talk with you, and then you're done. You dry off and step into one of her extra robes. 
So, you coming in? Follow her. You walk by Stella and into her bedroom. She gently closes the door behind you. Sorry, I didn't clean up beforehand. Uh, you can think of it as getting the authentic Stella experience. Yeah, I was going to say, we didn't have a choice but to follow her. She slips past you and lies on the bed, dressed in an oversized t-shirt. You're quick to follow. Four nights. This, I was going to say, this is not the first time we've slept over, but... <laughs> I was going to say, did we tell her that we were in here earlier today? <laughs> uh, she's warm and still slightly damp from the shower. Her skin fresh and flowery. She turns to look at you, smiling dimples creasing at the edge of her mouth. You could kiss me if you wanted to. You shift closer to her and close your eyes. The magnetic pull of anticipation rolls down your spine and across your skin. And for a moment that seems to last forever, you take in every detail of the world around you. <laughs> they just... Zzz. <laughs> the forested scent of her eucalyptus shampoo and beneath it, the slightest hint of campfire, the comforting heat of soft but callous hands against your chat, your cheek. Um, the thunder of your hearts beating ever more quickly in unison. The tension rises and rises, a tone seemingly without peak. <laughs> oh, wait, what is that evoke? Oh, it's beeps. Okay. And then it breaks and her lips touch yours. They're fresh and minty and soft, cool against yours, and guided by the gentleness of someone looking to hold on to the memory of tonight for a long, long time. And then she pulls you closer, tighter, and the two of you lose yourselves in each other. Eventually, you two break away and open your eyes, gazing at each other from opposite ends of the pillow. You drift off together, limbs intertwined, exhausted and safe and comforted. Tomorrow may it bring some new horror or might not, but whatever happens, you'll face it together. <laughs> I was gonna say, I I think part of that is it was one. It's a small bed, but two, I think that's also just like the angle of the the picture from it. I was gonna say, did Tabby just? I'm assuming Tabby just went home. <laughs> just the fact that the like the. Just, we argued with Tabby, she saved her butt, and then we ditched her. You <laughs> lost her loved one again? Yeah. This is the end of episode four. Follow us on social media to stay up to date on the rest of Scarlet Hollow's development. Goodness. Also, if anyone wants to say goodbye to the YouTube, because I will be posting all of my wonderful tears on YouTube. <laughs> That will be a thing. So if you were watching the YouTube, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back when episode five comes out. So yeah. Woo! Bye, YouTube. Jessica says bye, YouTube. Lonely says bye, YouTube. Goodbye, goodbye. Junk says bye, too. Goodbye. <laughs>